Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins and today I have got a super quick technique for you and I mean it when I say quick, this is ridiculously fast to do. It's going to use up those pattern papers that you wouldn't otherwise know what to do with and create gorgeous cards. Here's an example of one card that I've made using the technique but I'm going to be bringing in a much brighter background this time and creating a second card using that same technique and walking you through it. Now this is using the embossing folder from my brand new Spring Awakening collection from Textures. I'll link that down below and at the end for you. So this gorgeous floral embossing folder has so many uses and it is absolutely perfect for the technique that we're doing here. This is because it's got a bold design but there are a few gaps for us to fill in. So the first thing you want to do is take a pattern paper or a coloured paper. Now for this one I've actually used the Craft Consortium. Um, it's not, they're like alcohol drops papers. You can just see you've kind of got like um, alcohol um, ink sort of effect in the background there so that's a paper that I used it was from a paper pad and uh, it comes in lots of different colors I chose to go with the blues and greens in hindsight I probably would have actually gone even brighter to make this really stand out but that's what we're doing here this one is from I believe it's a studio light paper pack but many of us have pattern papers bright background papers that are maybe just too bright for us to use usually this is really going to tone it down so in the folder I'm going to take a versifying Claire. Now you can use something like a Memento but I find Versafine uh, it, with the pigment ink it, it does dry a little bit slower so you've got more time for this. And what we're going to do is brush the ink over the, uh, the embossing folder. Now you want to be careful to brush it over the pale side, the white side, not the side with the black markings. This is the side that's got the thin lines on so as I apply the ink here you'll see those lines look absolutely beautiful. So apply lots of ink. I tend to swipe to capture every raised area. And then I also do a bit of a dab just to make sure I'm loading this up with as much ink as I possibly can. If there's any areas where you need to press down a little bit harder, you can do that. But just be wary of not pressing in the edge or the corner of your ink pad at any point because this is going to distort your image and get ink onto the background. So now you can see we've kind of got what's on the front of the folder on the back and you want to put your paper down, face down onto that. Now this one has a pastel side and a bright side. I really want the brights, so I'm going to be placing this down. Now the best way for me to do this without smudging it is to actually place it onto the back there, lift that up and put the folder down and I'm going to grip this now, I'm not going to let it go, it's not going to move. I'm now going to bring this over to my die cutting machine and just run this through. The sandwich that I use is the two clear plates in the big shot and the base plate, I take all the other plates out. Being really careful not to move that paper and I'd suggest holding at the top here and just lifting the corner to ensure that you've definitely got a good transfer. If you don't have a good transfer and you need more pressure and need to put it back through your machine, by doing this, you're holding that paper still and you're going to have it lined up perfectly if then you need that second go. So we have now got our ink transferred beautifully onto our background. Now we can clean this up with a wet wipe, so just a simple baby wipe here, give it a wipe over, that will all clean off, no problem at all. You can even leave that until you've finished with your project, but don't forget to do it because otherwise next time you're in boss you're going to have that black ink on there. Then you want to take a black pen. Now it doesn't matter what sort of black pen, but I really like the dual ended pens. This one has a brush nib and a fine tip. So I can really get into the detail where I need, but I can also cover larger areas in a quicker time if I want to as well. So I'm going to, very often I find actually looking at the design helps me here, but I'm going to just go over all of the gaps colouring these in with black pen. Now if you used a different colour pen or rather a different colour ink for your outlines you would want to use the same colour pen for colouring in the black background. Most likely just have a play with different combinations. I'm sticking with the black and I find with this particular pen I've got quite a fine tip on the brush one as well so I don't need to be switching too much between the two nibs.
Now once I've gone around all those background spaces, I also pop a little bit more black into the stamen of the lily just here and at the top because the ink doesn't always transfer quite as solidly there. And look at that, isn't that absolutely beautiful? Now that's with a border, but I'm going to trim the border off of this one. And then that would just be placed onto a black card base. I might pop in one of my sentiments that comes from the Spring Awakening collection as well, which is what I did on this card here. How fabulous does that look? The most beautiful tropical florals, lots of colour, but a gorgeous background that's just come from this embossing folder. So if you like the look of this embossing folder, you can find this plus the rest of the Spring Awakening collection just through this link here. I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already. And I think you're also really going to like this video just here. So thank you for watching today. Take care, everybody. And I'll see you again very soon.